So, you know, about the consciousness work, we do um, a lot of contemplation, looking into things, investigating, etc. And that's all uh, well and good, but as you yourself well know, or you should know, or you might not know, <laughs> that it easily tends to be intellectual. Thing. It easily tends to remain in a, a form where you're actually believing things, you see, or concluding things, or intellectualizing stuff, you know, and thinking you're making a lot of progress when in fact you may not be. You may be, but you may not be. Same as this. One of my criticisms of most spiritual practices is that the practice itself gives very little feedback, you know, and or valuable feedback or confrontation. You know, some do in some ways and stuff like that, you know, but a lot of times it's, you, know, you just get good at the practice. And so if you're practicing something, whatever it is, a form of meditation or uh, sitting a certain way or contemplating or whatever, you get good at the practice and you figure, okay, now I'm, you know, I'm really good at this stuff because uh, I can do the practice. You know, I can sit this way, I can do these things that they ask me to do. <clears throat> on, the, on the one hand. On the other hand, you may not be real enough because you don't have enough confrontation. That's where working with the body, and in my world, working with the marshal or something that gives you feedback and physical feedback, you see, is very useful. Because when you get the physical feedback about your actions, your mind, your thinking, your perspective, it often shows up quite differently than when you're just imagining, you know, than when you're just sitting there and <coughs> contemplating or imagining something to be the case, you see. It's like one of my criticisms, and I, you know, don't mean to be judgmental, of Aikido, for example. You know, Aikido, beautiful art. Lots of good stuff in it. Good philosophy, good developments. Uh, nice techniques. But <clears throat> there is no confrontation. There's no combat. See? There's no fighting. There's no even games that really push the envelope. And it's all cooperative. Okay, so that's fine as a practice. See, but then the people, and there's a there's a relationship here, okay? <laughs> see, the people doing it, so you get your Aikido teachers and whatnot, and they think that they're incredibly good in the martial world. They think they're just fantastic, you know, being able to manipulate reality and other people and throw them in, you know, in just fantastic ways. And they can't. You understand? See, when they run up against somebody who is martial, they can't handle it at all. Not at all. They don't know what to do. They get their asses kicked. For the most part. It's sad but true. It's kind of like that, you know, that ki ai ki that not ki ai that Anyway, move people without touching them, you know? See? And then in his own world, he throw people around without touching and like that because the students are kind of going along with it, you know. And he's got them programmed, et cetera, et cetera, whatever, however he does that. But he really thought that he had power in relationship to other people. You see, again, no feedback, no real feedback. And this is a trap that we can easily fall into, you know, in different ways, you see. So in his world, he thought he was, he could really do it. You see? But it didn't work when uh, you know he fought an MMA guy. He actually had the nuts to do that. So he <laughs> fought an MMA guy, the MMA guy just took him out right away. See, there was no he had no idea. So, oh he's taken out right away. See, because he never had that confrontation. He never had that feedback. You see that. In any case, you see, the uh, value and the necessity of being able to get some real feedback some real life feedback, some real confrontational feedback, some physical feedback, 
and other forms of feedback, however it comes, you see. You know, in confrontation, you get to see a lot. See? You get, your ego gets challenged and usually kicked around, you see? You see, your perspective, etc., your beliefs, because it just doesn't matter what you believe when you're on the mat, so to speak. When you're fighting somebody, your beliefs aren't worth shit. You know, in combat, what's valuable is how you relate to another person and their mind and their movement and force, etc. How you understand this relationship. You know, and be able to undertake fast uh, learning. Yeah, when things aren't going well, okay? and uh, and stuff is in any case. Then you get the different feedback, and it can be quite useful. It, it, you know what I'm saying? See, I understand it's hard. You know, you don't want to go into the foreign things, hard things, difficult things. You know, you know, because you might suffer. <laughs> you, know what I'm you might uh, suck. You know. And nobody likes to suck, right? You know, so you don't want to do badly. See? But it's necessary. I kept throwing myself into every situation, you know? Professional boxing, fencing, uh, wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, anything that people did <clears throat> in this world, you see? Got lots of feedback, okay? You know? And then could improve can change my perspective yeah, and learn. Yeah. You know, many people would come to me in the old school and they would um, they would think they were really good. And in their school, in their environment, they I'm sure were really good. They're probably a top student and they could probably beat all the people in their world, and see, and so they were really good. And they came to test out with this, you know, legend Ralston. Because even back then I had a reputation in certain circles. Yeah. In any case, so they come and test out, and yipes. <laughs> you know, they would not do well. See, and that's kind of crushing, isn't it? It's, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, this is not what I wanted. You see, I wanted to prove myself against this big name and show how great I am. Instead, I got humiliated, you know? Because they didn't step outside their circle until then. And so it was laudable that they were brave enough to try it then, you see? But again, see, then we start thinking. It's like, oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm really good, you know? or something, or I'm really conscious, I'm really aware, see, when it may not be true, not the feedback, you know, it can, we can fool ourselves, see? and in any case, even if we're not trying to fool ourselves, we're trying to be as honest as possible, see, when we're operating within a certain parameter, a certain box, and that's the world, you know, that's the cosmology, or that's the belief system, or that's the you know, the routines and practices, etc., that we're operating within, we might get really good at that, but the reality isn't just that. And we get no feedback about reality, you see? Because we're operating out of this, you know, one space. I know, not you, but maybe somebody you know. So in any case, you see, uh, got to be aware of this and that's one of the reasons why I say working the body doing something that is difficult for you say so doing something where you get actual objective feedback is best but it may be some subjective or social feedback or something you know you see is useful 